Good evening, Fulbrighters. Good evening. Good evening to you. It is so great to see you here, and welcome to Denver. I'm delighted to welcome you to the 46th Annual Conference of the Fulbright Association. My name is John Bader, and I have been honored to serve the Fulbright community as Executive Director of the Association for seven years. Yeah, I didn't think I would make it this far. Um, Being here in the Rockies, we are humbled by nature's glory. So it is a fitting moment, I think, for the association to honor and acknowledge that the land on which we hold this conference is the ancestral homelands of the Arapaho, Cheyenne, and Ute nations. We also recognize the 48 contemporary tribal nations that are historically tied to the lands that make up the state of Colorado. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and acknowledge their enduring presence on this wonderful land. It is our responsibility to work toward understanding and respecting the diverse indigenous cultures that continue to enrich Denver and our communities. Let me start, rather than conclude, my remarks with uh, gratitude. Thank you all for joining us uh, in this annual celebration of the Fulbright Legacy a reunion of old friends, a chance to meet some amazing new friends, and a time to share ideas for a much better world. I am grateful for the gift of your talents, expertise, and your time. I look forward to learning from you, getting to know you, and to hearing your stories and hopes. A gathering like this requires many oars in the water, as you might imagine, pulling toward this special moment here in this magnificent city. The first oar in that water was our wonderful Colorado chapter, led by Nancy Sayre. Yeah, way to go, Colorado chapter. Yeah, Coloradans anchor this conference, and the chapter has been a full and effective partner in building our program and making all of this happen. So I'm very thankful to you. Nancy, where are you? There you are. Thank you, dear. Um, I want to thank the National Board of the Fulbright Association, especially our amazing chair, Cynthia Baldwin, for their support, generosity, and leadership. Cynthia will join me on stage in a few minutes for her remarks and to introduce our keynote speaker. I am blessed, as you can see, uh, to lead a great team of dedicated professionals, Christine Oswald, Fiona Breslin, Munir Sayeh, Claire Jagla, and especially the leader of the prize and of this great conference, Alicia Montague. Yeah, a great team. You will see them throughout the conference and especially at the registration desk and the swag store. Um, and so please stop by, say hello, and thank them. I'd, I'd, I'd be grateful to you. We are fortunate to have many partners who have helped build this conference and power our programming all year. The Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs of the State Department, represented here by Mary Kirk and Andrew McCullough, supports our work by funding capacity building projects, the Youth Summit that we just concluded, the Chapter Leader Workshop that concludes this conference, and so much more. So thank you to ECA. Thank you very, very much. Our conference partners also include, there we go, uh, the Autism so Society of Colorado for designing our sensory space, the Daniels College of Business at the University of Denver for hosting tomorrow's reception on their campus, Hivebright, which has developed the Fulbright app, and Coors, um, Molson Coors for donating some of the beverages at tonight's reception. So thank God for the Rockies above and the breweries below. <laughs> I have to figure out how to tell my wife that we're moving here tomorrow. A special thanks also goes to Florida International University for their support. We share a deeply felt shared mission with our sisters and brothers of the Peace Corps, so I'm pleased to thank them for sponsoring this keynote evening, and I invite you to consider how to continue to serve the world as you enjoy this video. Are you looking for more in this world? Are you ready to be part of something bigger? And we are looking for you. The big hearted, the bold, the messy and the gutsy, the teachers, 
The growers, the builders, the skilled, the sharers, the change makers. We need you. We are the Peace Corps. In more than 60 countries, we go all in and go all out. We are volunteers, partners, communities, working together, living together, bringing our experience, passion, and joy to building a better world. Together. We are powered by connection. We're driven by purpose. We join hands to make a difference. We open our arms, our hearts, our doors, our minds. We learn more, give more. We share freely and serve boldly. Are you ready to tackle the tough stuff? Learn more than you teach. Plant ideas and grow wise. To go the distance to make a difference. Then we have a place where you belong. Join us. The Peace Corps. Going the distance to make a difference. I meant it literally when I said our brothers and sisters, my brother is a Peace Corps volunteer in Kenya. Um, our other key sponsors represent higher education, Auburn, Rice University, Penn State, the University of South Florida, and the University of Arkansas have been loyal sponsors for many years, both for the conference and for the prize, so thank you to them. We welcome new partners this year, which is so exciting, United Airlines, I, I don't know how you got here, but I got here on United, um, the Harvard Graduate School of Education and Yale's Jackson School of Global Affairs. We are honored to have you as friends and colleagues. A round of applause for all of our partners and sponsors. Thank you. Many of them, many of them have tables just outside and I hope you'll visit them during the reception that goes on later. A few programming notes. Uh, best done if you use the conference app uh, throughout your time here. Lots of notices there, lots of ways to connect with people, uh, all the schedules, uh, the maps, all that kind of stuff. There is a physical program uh, as well. I want to point out that we have a mother's room right across the way in Summit Peak. Uh, we also have been experiencing, as I mentioned, a time of incredible stress, uh, which I'll discuss more in a moment. Uh, but you're most welcome to take a break anytime in our quiet room in Maroon Peak, which is also just across the way. Um, I think that's where I'm going to go right after I give this speech. Um, tonight, after our wonderful keynoter, Juliana Richardson, speaks, she will be joined on stage by Matthew Holloway, uh, who will serve as moderator, asking his questions and then fielding yours. Matthew is a Fulbrighter to Panama, right, Panama? Um, and founder of Conversations by Courage a consulting practice that connects ideas, sectors, and communities for collective well-being. We welcome you to join the reception that follows, as I said. Tomorrow we begin two days of exceptional programming as we share our ideas, practices, and uh, findings. Our plenaries feature an extraordinary speakers and thinkers. Our panel on climate change, the environment, and food and water insecurity tomorrow morning at 11 is headlined by U.S. Senator Michael Bennett and USAID's Clinton White. Clinton helped lead an incredible workshop, a, an inspiring experience, a youth summit just down the hall, uh, ended just an hour ago, uh, to promote study abroad and international exchange programs among students from all over the Denver area. It was, it was an amazing uh, experience, truly. A special thanks to Leland Lazarus and Wen Kuni Siant for leading this summit, a game-changing program for the association. Where, are you two here? Where are you guys? There they are. Thank you. Guys. We will all enjoy a reception at the University of Denver tomorrow evening, which you can reach by train, which we encourage as a sustainable alternative. The train stop is only a block from here, or by cab or Uber. You can grab a printed map at the registration desk or see in the conference app and, of course, the recent emails that you've received. On Saturday, be sure to attend the Selma Jean Cohen lecture featuring Tria Blue Wakpa in the morning, our chapters awards lunch, and concluding our conference, a plenary session on social justice and prejudice, health and education. This will be headlined by Lucille Echo Hawk, a great adv advocate for Denver's 
uh, Native community, and Colorado State Senator Julie Gonzalez. These plenaries, indeed all our sessions, uh, posters and roundtables, are an effort to focus our annual gathering on how we can make the world a better place. We clearly have a lot of work to do, so let me conclude my welcome uh, to this Fulbright celebration, ironically, on a somber note. We gather at a time of extreme conflict and violence, especially in Ukraine and now in Israel and Palestine. Terrorism, war, and wanton destruction, especially against civilians and children, represent a terrible and collective failing of humans. Despite our efforts to build understanding and peace, such as through the Fulbright program, we are gripped in fevers of anti-Semitism, prejudice, intolerance, and especially revenge. And these are not just far away stories of massacres, rocket attacks, and ground assaults. They are here right at home. A beautiful little boy, Wadia al Fayume, was stabbed to death in Joliet, Illinois, by his landlord, who was poisoned by ignorance, hate, and Islamophobia. If we had all done better to make our politics and polity more tolerant and loving, Wadia would still be playing in his backyard and looking forward to his seventh birthday. Remember him, remember him, and the children of Ukraine and Israel and Gaza and so many other places of conflict as you embark on these days with fellow Fulbrighters and friends. Consider how your work can and will make the world a better place for children across the world. Speak to each other as Fulbrighters do, with respect and empathy and create a safe space here at this conference and everywhere you go to resolve conflicts peacefully. We encourage many points of view, but we cannot tolerate anti-Semitism, racism, Islamophobia, and any prejudice that betrays our commitment to respect and mutual understanding. Please join me, if you will, in a moment of silence of contemplation and perhaps prayer as we not only hope for peace, but make it happen. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce my friend and my board chair, Cynthia Baldwin. A Fulbrighter to Zimbabwe, Cynthia was the second African-American woman to serve on the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. A dedicated public servant, Cynthia has served many causes and on many boards, including Penn State and Duquesne University. She is one of Pennsylvania's, and I would say one of America's real treasures. She is a mentor to many, including me. And when she rotates off our board in January, after seven years of exceptional service, everyone at the association will feel the loss. Cynthia, for all you have done to honor and magnify the Fulbright legacy, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the Honorable Cynthia Akron Baldwin. 